Well, thank you so much for staying with us. It's a minute after nine o'clock and we are on our road to the elections 2024 and the hashtag is uh, elections on Kaya. And today I'm really privileged to welcome the ACDP leader, Reverend uh, uh, Kenneth Misha, who's in studio with us. Thank you so much for being with us. Good evening. Good evening and thank you very much for having me on. Let's talk about your manifesto, a really interesting document. Um, I am intrigued that you wanted to start off by picking up on the COVID era that saw us really reeling uh, around the world and you're saying, you know, let's go back and think about how that COVID affected us, loss of jobs, particularly in this country. But you're also concerned about what you call interference and your concern around how the World Health Organization is probably starting to to creep in into our politics and inform how we deal with our healthcare sector. Explain that a bit more. Well, all the years, the World Health Organization was giving advice and recommendations to nations that are aligned to them, but they were not imposing their opinions on nations. They were not forcing nations to take a particular viewpoint. As you know that even during COVID, there were different scientists with different opinions. Scientists that were not in agreement. So now to impose an opinion of a group of people that are undermining the right of others to think differently, we do not think that is correct. It did not work in 2020 during that era, and we don't think it will work in the future. People have rights. South Africans have constitutional rights that must be respected by any organization that wants to deal with South Africa. Mm. So if South Africans uh, or the South, South African government is willing to give up their sovereignty. We as citizens are saying, no ways. Let all the citizens be informed whether they are in agreement that their sovereignty can be laid on the altar mm. of convenience for the World Health Organization. And, and of course, that's talking a bit about um, vaccines and how scientists dealt with, with how we were experiencing COVID. In terms of things like lockdown and things like that, how, how would you have preferred that we manage that? Well, lockdown obviously was wrong. I can even use the word evil because people were robbed of their assets, their cars, their houses, their jobs above them all. And uh, we saw suffering in a number of homes. And as you know that when it started, government was imposing regulations that were ridiculous that they were even stopping uh, organizations that were helping the poor with food that you cannot feed them all right and so people were starving unnecessarily so a lockdown it infringes of our constitutional constitutional right to movement so anything that undermines our constitutional right must be looked at with suspicion including the lockdowns that are imposed and that the World Health Organization will impose if they get their way. That's why ACDP is saying others may be quiet about it. We care about the constitutional right of all South Africans. Uh, just to pick up on the issue of unemployment, as you said, people lost jobs. Um, you, are, you are advocating for entrepreneurship in this manifesto and saying that one of the things that you'd like to see happen is um, entrepreneurship being encouraged by some funding, some sort of funding of young people to get skills. And I wonder, because young people keep saying we are skilled, you know, we, we are tired of these incubation programs. Will you do it differently or, or what are you proposing? Well, firstly, we'll encourage parents to uh, m m uh, mentor their own children. If you look at foreign nationals that are in the country, almost most of them, they know how to run business. Spasa shops that were not working, they know how to turn them around. Uh, even those that never even went to university because their parents taught them as they grew up. Now, I remember that when we grew up, that we would go with our parents to the shops and say, okay, my girl or my son, I'm going so and so, such a place. Please lock the store, close the store and such a such a time after balancing the books. So from young, mm -hmm. even before the, uh, children were having university 
uh, degrees and so on, parents taught them. So now, if government wants to continue where our parents in the past were doing, they need to start saying, parents, let's work together. Mm. Teach your children. If you have a job or if you have a business, it is your responsibility to ensure that your child knows how to count money with you. Show the child how to count money and trust your child that your child will look after that money. It's not only you looking after it, but your child can do that mm -hmm. because we grew up seeing that. Mm -hmm. So when you give a spaza shop to a Somali, he never went to university. He knows exactly what to do because they learned that from the parents at home. So a culture of training our own children, even in the areas of entrepreneurship, training them skills on how to balance the books. It is number one responsibility of the parents. But then when government uh, trains people, it should be with the mindset of we are going to mentor them. We are going to walk the road with them and ensure that before we leave them, they know how to run on their own. Mm -hmm. Like when a child is using a tricycle or those balancing wheels, you know, you allow the child to, to run with you with all those balancing wheels on their sides. And when the child now is comfortable enough, you let them go. So, and I think this is even what government has to do but the process must be started by the parents. So, so that's a very valid point about the fact that you know, we need to teach people, young people, how to work with money, look after money and so on. But is it a fair comparison when you look at the foreign shops? Because in your manifesto, you do recognize that there needs to be a bit more inspection um, into these stores. There is a problem. You want health inspectors to go in. Because one would argue maybe they thrive because they're not doing business ethically. You know, they're selling counterfeit goods. They're not selling goods at the right market value. So, so would that be a, a fair comparison? Well, it is. Um, there are those who uh, do business ethically, but the vast majority of them are unethical. Sure. And we cannot stop yes. training our children to compete with these guys, even who are unethical. Say, our children, what they're doing is not right. This is the right way to do it. And we show them how to do it. And I believe we can easily do that. We can even beat them. But unfortunately, our children are not taught how to do it. And when government take uh, young people through incubators, they don't hold their hands and run with them until they can run themselves. So Reverend Mesha, you also speak of funding particular mm. types of subjects mm. or degrees and mm. diplomas. Which are you referring to? Business has to tell government and universities. We need people with these skills. Okay, And once we know that government or business is saying we need more South Africans with these skills, then that government should come communicate that to universities and say, guys, there is a need. If we want to have graduates who are employable, focus on these subjects, focus on this so that when they graduate and actually some business will even already say, OK, we are going to employ you, we're going to employ you. And they give you pocket money for going there and doing some short courses with them or practice with them, okay, practicals with them. So these are things that we want to see happening so that we will not have uh, graduates that we are told are unemployable mm -hmm. as we are having many of such today. You're saying end cadre deployment. Would you in the ACDP not deploy members of your party to certain positions? Well, the difference is to take people who are not skilled and promote them over people who are skilled just because they are your friends, they are your cadres, you are drinking together when you are wherever. So you favor them over the others. So the most important thing, we are looking at South Africa. We want to make South Africa work. We want to have all our people getting jobs. So if there is somebody who is qualified, uh, and we know that that position uh, needs a person of this qualification. I'm sure we can we can take a person to that without using the word cadre deployment, uh, deployment because of its negative connotations. All mm -hmm. right, it has negative con mm -hmm. connotation. Even big businesses do that. Okay, they are able to transfer manager from this bank to the other. Big business does mm -hmm. that. Okay, they are able to do that. So if you don't do it based on favoritism friendship, relations, he's my brother, he's my sister. Even though he doesn't have the best qualifications, I'm going to give him that position. But the very definition would be, 
you have in your party someone who's qualified, mm. someone with experience, someone who can do the job, mm. but you would prefer them over someone who's not in your party? Well, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interestingly, um, in one of our discussions with our, our colleagues, yes. I once said to them, this man is such a good finance minister. Mm -hmm. If we get an opportunity to, to govern and he's still uh, healthy enough to <laughs> continue with the job, we'll take him. Okay. When you look at the, what happened when uh, we got our new democracy, 1994, we are told that um, Tata Mandela insisted that Derry Keys, as the Minister of Finance, must continue because he was doing a good job and then put Trevor Manuel as his understudy. And Trevor Manuel ended up being, some say the best, some say one of the best finance ministers we ever had. Why? Because uh, Dada Mandela, in his wisdom, saw the need of having a mentor. Mentorship programs are lacking within government, uh, mentorship programs. Mm -hmm. But it happened in the past. It helped us. We benefited from that. At times we wish that there would have been more mentors. Okay, and those people obviously, unfortunately, were belonging to a party of the oppressors. Okay, but they knew something the new democracy needed. I think when maturity comes into politics, people don't put as a priority the membership of an individual. I guarantee you, I promise you, that if when the time comes, because that time will come when uh, the ACDP is given the reins, we will take the best of the best. Even if it doesn't belong... you won't belong. start in the party. Huh? You will not start in the party. Not necessarily. We'll comp compare yes. what we have and what's outside. And because we are looking at the best performance and best interests of the country, we'll say, okay, he's doing better than our own. Let's give him the job. Fair enough. You say you also want to get rid of race-based policies that have caused problems and obviously also caused tenderpreneurs. Does that mean you, you really are against the BEE policies or is that some referring to something else? Well, that includes BEE policies. We cannot want to be favored forever. We must grow up. Okay. I do not want my color to be used as the main qualification to get the job to get an opportunity. I want my brains, my brains, my skills to be the main qualification. So for me to be put in the forefront all the time because I'm black, even when I'm useless, I don't think that's fair. And so then what do you propose for redress? You speak of inequality and this country, as we know, has a big problem, inequality problem, one of the, the worst in the world. How are we going to redress uh, some of the issues that we have? Um, to redress the challenges we have, skill your people, train your people, let them be able to compete with others. Mm -hmm. um, we have had this democracy for 30 years. Mm -hmm. How many people can we say because of BEE they have outdone themselves? Okay? Mm -hmm. They are they are they are taken on merit, not because of their skin color. Mm -hmm. And there are some of the things that we have messed up. Why? Because of an obsession with color, if I may use as an example. Mm -hmm. yes. Infrastructure. Yes. In our country. We have load shedding today. Both power, I never ever thought there would ever be something called water shedding. Mm. All right? We come from Boxback, where we always drank directly from the tap. Mm. Today, water coming out of a tap is brown. Can't drink it. So we feel sorry for those who cannot afford bottled water. When you have a problem, that needs to be solved. And you want that problem only to be solved by a person of another color. I cannot agree with that. Mm. You are not showing your care attitude for everybody. If we care for our people, we'll say, let the best person do the job. Okay. After 30 years, 
We need to start saying that. That is why now after 30 years, some people are now looking around. I've been voting for uh, guys uh, who have been in the struggle for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25. Now we are 30. Hi. Now I'm starting to think, to think about now. <laughs> I think about change. I'm starting to look around now. Why? Because people as people know that give people be patient with people who are still crawling, mm -hmm. people who are still learning. But until what age? Until which year are we going to say give us an opportunity? We are still learning to walk. You're saying you're concerned about policy uncertainty in relation to the issue of land, and you're saying it deters foreign investors. What are you concerned about here? When an investor want to purchase land or want to use land they want to have certainty that whatever investment i make here in the next 30 years i'll still be reaping fruits from the investment now when there is uncertainty people are not assured all right an investor comes and say okay can i use this land for 50 years Hey, no, I'm not sure about that. It will depend. You see, that's the uncertainty that people don't want. And I believe when a person is doing a good job, look at Rwanda, for example. I was amazed when I went to Rwanda. Rwanda is attracting investments like South Africa has to learn from. Today, I heard something shocking today <laughs> that um, Zimbabwe mm -hmm. is going to offer South Africa clean drinking water. Yes. Mussina, it will offer okay. South Africa some water. Now, South Africa has been providing for everybody. Now things have turned around. Now we have to look to Zimbabwe. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I don't agree with that. Something is wrong. We need to be the leaders in Africa. Why? Because of the technology we have in South Africa that's not found in other African countries. You're concerned about the, the energy sector. Uh, you spoke a bit about that as well as, you know, Transnet and those other 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 entities. Uh, just maybe explain for us, for those who have not been following, how you feel about this. In your view, how did we get here with ESCOM, Transnet, and the like? Well, one of the reasons is because of the issue of Kana. We threw out people with experience rather than pair them with learners, with people of lesser experience so that the less experience we learn from the more experience we didn't do that we just threw threw people out with their skills technology technological skills because of the color of their skin you remember i think it was around 20 2010 when south africa won uh, escom won the best power utility in the whole world it was not won by japan germany or america but south africa ESCOM was the best in the world. So as our people took, took over, when we took over, we should have said we want to remain the best in the world rather than just replace and fire people because of the color of their skin. Today, we are suffering. Today, we are having this load shedding that is destroying our food in the fridges, mm. that is destroying our roads network, and many other things that have been destroyed, which I think is not fair. I think for the betterment of our country, let us use the best. Look at uh, what international countries are doing. They are poaching the best in Africa. They don't say we have their own. They compare. They say this guy is in Nigeria. This guy is in Ghana. This guy is bad. That skill, we are lacking in that. Then they poach that person. No obsession with localization when it comes to producing what the people on the ground need. I am for localization. Let's start there. But people cannot go to bed hungry. People cannot remain jobless while we are saying localization. Our okay. road to the elections 2024 and the hashtag is elections on Kaya. Listen, take us uh, into your confidence and uh, call us. 063 That's where you can drop us a note, a voice note, and you can also call on 0866-0000959. Reverend Mishwe is here. We're looking at the ACDP manifesto. Any questions you have, he's here for you. We're here for an entire hour. Reverend Mishwe, thanks again for staying with us. Let's talk a little bit about what you are proposing would be the solution to get ESCOM back on track. You're saying exempt ESCOM from all the red tape, from all the procurement requirements. What do you mean by that? 
the people want to beat for any for any position should be allowed and secondly the time time period when we were in as an example in Rwanda we heard that to register a business it takes them about less than 72 hours register a business from scratch South Africa because of red tape how long does it take take months and uh, rather than our leaders learning from African countries like, like uh, Rwanda if you want people to come and invest give them listen to what they want and give them what they want because you want their money you want their investments if they want um, what they apply for to be given within few days or few hours do bend over backwards and give them why because you want investments that will benefit your own people so red tape is a problem in south africa and well, well then how, how are you going to deal with because essentially red tape and some of these procurement measures were put in place to deal with corruption syndicates that you refer to on the manifesto so so how are you going to balance it how are you going to avoid this kind of corruption that we are seeing is endemic in these uh, state-owned entities without the red tape N- not that what you're saying doesn't make sense i'm saying you, you how are you going to balance it out we need to learn from successful people we need to swallow our pride if if people like rwanda i'll make you run that's a great example because I was there and I was surprised by what also, okay? If they can do away with red tape and still be clean when it comes to governance, what are they doing that we're not doing? Well, we can all agree, are we not, that South Africa has a corruption problem and an, an endemic corruption problem across the board, not mm. just with uh, state-owned sure. entities. A- and so, as, as a party that obviously is a Christian-based party, there's a bigger problem here. Sure. So how, how do we deal with that? Government should have a stick to punish the corrupt. What Government does it look like? Give pays lip service mm. uh, when they talk about dealing with corruption. We have members of cabinet, leaders in government, who have been pointed out, exposed, that they are part of those who are responsible for the corruption we have. What is government doing about it? What's the president doing about it? He can talk about, we are going to deal with corruption. But when it comes to the rubber meeting the road, he doesn't do it. So in South Africa, that is why many criminals and we are told international criminals find South Africa as a good place to be at. Why? Because South Africa, they know that if you are found uh, doing corruption, you are going to get away with it. There are people who are millionaires because of corruption. Now, ACDP obviously would ensure that firstly, people are rewarded for exposing corruption. Yes, you have a program for whistleblowers. Yeah. What does that look like? Um, if it is f- about finances, mm-hmm. okay, a, 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 a percentage, we say a percentage has to be given to a whistleblower, number one. Number two, whistleblowers must be protected because we see them as nation builders also. They are contributors that are not given the due that they deserve. The tricky part about whistleblowers often, Reverend Mishwe, is that sometimes they become whistleblowers after having been part of the corruption. As a moral-based political party, how how are you going to deal with the definition of who the whistleblower or who qualifies to be called a valid, legitimate whistleblower that would qualify for that kind of amount of money? Well, anybody should be can be a whistleblower yes and if at all you stole before you became a whistleblower you have to pay back what you stole yourself so you are not becoming a whistleblower to cover up your thefts. if you have stolen you also must get the punishment for what you have done but i i think if we have such an attitude corruption will be eradicated a number of years went to brazil to a city called aziz Mm -hmm. okay city called aziz I, I don't know whether I'll have time to mention the three no things problem. that go left ahead. me with my mouth open. You're welcome to go ahead. Okay? Yes. Firstly, 
we were having church gatherings and between the place, the church where we had meetings and our residence was a huge city park. Mm -hmm. Okay. We would go home many times after 12 o'clock midnight mm -hmm. and see mothers and children in the park, mm -hmm. not seeing one man. Mm -hmm. Now, for people coming from Joburg, mm -hmm. it was a, a culture <laughs> shock. Mm -hmm. And the question we asked was, won't they be raped? Is this not dangerous? And the locals said, not here. Not here. Because of punishment here, the rapists, they go to Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, and, and others, Brasilia, and what, other what places. What is that punishment? Huh? What, what kind we of did punishment go, did they? Okay, we did not go into the details of yes. what kind of punishment, sure. but they say they arrest and they, they are not allowing any mm -hmm. second uh, repeat offenders, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. to easily get away if they are arrested again. Mm -hmm. They said we are using severe punishment. Mm -hmm. As I said, but we didn't go into details. But the second thing that shocked me, yes. one morning, on a Saturday morning, a man came with a push me before I go car. Skoro All right? He parked this car in front of our residence, mm -hmm. okay? Because the car did not have a self-starter. Opposite the, our residence was a tavern. Mm -hmm. The man left the car idling with the keys in the ignition, across the road into the tavern. We looked, I looked at my watch, about 25 minutes. The man was in the tavern, the car idling in front of South Africans' eyes. So we asked our host, won't that car be stolen? Again, the answer was, not here. Cars are not stolen. And then this person said, a car stolen in South Africa because it was never in South Africa. A car, car stolen in South Africa. We said cars are stolen in South Africa even if you, you even if you use a gorilla steering wheel, they'll take the car in the gorilla, Alice. <laughs> you said you've got three stories. What's the third one? <laughs> okay. Thirdly, um, the mayor of the city knew that I was a, a member of parliament. Yes. So he hosted a farewell lunch for us. Yes. Okay. So politicians like speeches, he gave a speech. After his speech, <laughs> he said, uh, any question before it close? I raised my hand. I asked him, don't you have poor people in Aziz? Mm. He said, no, we have plenty. He said, but where are they? We don't see poor people around here, mm -hmm. not even as a street lights. We don't see beggars. What do you do with poor people? Is that simple. We have a center where we keep poor people. Maximum 14 days. Okay? Maximum 14 days. He said that during those 14 days, they trace the family of that person they found in the street. Because their argument is and their reasoning is everybody has a family. So there must be something wrong at home for a person to choose to sleep in the street. So when they find the family, if obviously it's uh, relations, relational issues, then they deal with them. They bring in social workers. Or in some cases, also he said, psychologists in extreme cases. He said, but after dealing with that, if the core problem is a job, mm -hmm. joblessness, mm -hmm. a person in mm -hmm. the street, because they are hungry. Which is mainly what is the problem here, especially mm -hmm. in the main city. He said, we take responsibility of feeding that person while we find a job for him. So that's how we do it. We find we feed that person and that family until we find a job for them would we afford to do that i mean when you look at the province like Gauteng, where everybody comes here for a job can Gauteng do that is that what you propose Gauteng can do it if we check how many people are coming from Gauteng from outside the country mm -hmm. our borders are porous mm -hmm. we allow any jack and jill to come into the country we have crime, so high crime rates in the country because we have people who do not qualify to be in the country. They are not known. They commit crimes. They get away with their crimes because you don't have their fingerprints. And so ACDB says, tighten the borders, close the borders. We know other parties are saying, no, Africa is one. Remove all the borders. That's not practical. What are you going to do to ensure that people of the soil, and when I say people of the soil, I'm not talking about people from far countries. I'm talking about people who are born here. People who are born here are prioritized. And if they are prioritized, like you prioritize your children by putting a fence around your house. You have a fence, I have my fence to prioritize my children.
Okay, when I have some leftovers, I can give others. But my main responsibility is my family. Government's number one responsibility is its own citizens. Let's take a, a voice note from Trotli So. Let's take a listen. Greetings. My name is Trotli So from Ekuruleni. Um, I agree with um, Reverend Misha that we should start working with our hands. Young people should get used to working with their hands. Um, if you look around areas like Wadeville and Jamiston, um, they look like ghost towns now. We can't even make matchsticks or even toothpicks here in South Africa. We have to always import them. And we know that South Africa is an industrial country. Um, we thrive with our industries. Our manufacturing industries are what makes the economy. Even with our minerals, we take our minerals from here and then we have to buy them back again from Europe. So we need a party that will help us to bring back industrialization in this country. All right. There is another voice not reverent, and then you can respond to both. You know, as someone who is working within corporate South Africa and has been within corporate South Africa for the past 20 years, I have never ever come across a black person or an Indian person or a colored person who was hired purely because of their race. There has always been merit applied to that. I agree that while there are certain uh, sectors that um, abuse BEE um, and there's fronting and etc., I do think for the large part, BE is a good thing because essentially what will happen is that networks will widen. Um, there's a popular saying, your net worth is your network. And, at, and right now, networks are very clicky. And unfortunately, it is according to race. So people are hiring people within their network. So I think um, because BE has been applied incorrectly within certain sectors, not all, within certain sectors, we suffer um, because um, there's this stench on it that, that then makes it seem like we're getting in with no merit, you know? So I think um, we need a BEE 2.0 where it is correctly applied, where networks are widened and people are getting in on merit and everybody's network and net worth is improved. Reverend? Well, I, I agree. I agree with what she's saying. My point is we cannot rely on BEE forever. I was surprised when I was in the U.S. a few times, many black people saying, people who have been free for 100 years, 100 years, and they are still complaining that we will never develop. And they say we will never develop because um, we were meant, meant to work for a white man now they are not forced to work for a white man why don't the black person start good jobs to em- and start employing black people it's not happening uh, if it happens very minimal very minimal all right so i'm saying bee has its place i agree that it has not been applied correctly in some circles but there are circles where it has been applied correctly if we look at escom for example we've been talking about escom all right if the caller can tell us where ESCOM went wrong without making a general statement that BE was not um, applied correctly, I would say about ESCOM, the, the, the reasoning that, that, that Mandela used when he said, I want the Rikis to retain this position because while we were fighting, this man was focusing on developing, improving uh, his knowledge of finances, all right, and applied. He was given an opportunity to apply his knowledge. Mm. So we are uh, guys, we are outside. We study. We are not given that opportunity to apply the knowledge. So Tata said, okay, let this one that has had an opportunity to apply the knowledge mentor this one that still needs to do practicals. Let him do the practicals under supervision. And because of that, there was success. 
All right. We cannot forever. I would not agree. And everybody has the right to do their own opinion. But I would not agree that forever I want to be favored because of the color of my skin. I prefer to be favored because of what is in my head. I am skillful, I am able, and I know that if I'm put next to somebody of a different color, I will compete to people's surprise, okay? Because I'm skilled. But now, Tlotliso. Tlotliso was correct. Mm -hmm. I want to appreciate what Tlotliso said. Mm -hmm. <coughs> when we grew up, when we were still in school, mm -hmm. we were trained to work with the, our hands. Mm. All right? We were trained to work with our hands. While we were in primary schools, we were cleaning our own classrooms. Mm. We, were, we, knew, we knew how to plant cabbage, spinach, carrots, you name it. We learned that when we were at school. So if parents were not working, we would never go hungry because we are taught mm. to use our hands, something which is lacking in our days. When um, the need for children to do cleaning and clean the old classroom was removed, we were told they must focus on their studies. The same people need 30% to pass, meaning that removing them from doing manual work has not made them better students. Mm. I've, I've got to get through. There are so many questions here I'm looking at. Um, Wendy Isaacs is asking, um, okay, let me start. There's a lot of questions here. She's saying, are you seriously selling the idea that the SA Embassy can be moved to Jerusalem and uh, how will you do that? Um, she goes on to ask that um, also please explain um, your your position on the genocide case at the ICJ and uh, how do you think that the issue of the Palestine will have lasting peace? <laughs> um, lasting peace. If you want a lasting peace, you need to agree that everybody's right to exist must be respected. You and I cannot be good neighbors if I refuse or I deny you the right to exist. Look at the manifestos. Look at uh, what Hamas Charter says, PLO Charter says that they will never accept the right of Israel to exist. That has been removed from their charter. No. You know that. No. Yes, it has. Okay, let's talk about that. It has been removed. When was it removed? I'll, I'll revise that. I'll, I'll check that again. Because the I last time I said... it's no longer there. Okay, no, no. Yes. All right, I'll check that again and you, I'll owe you... You'll owe me a sweetie. <laughs> you tell me what flavor <laughs> and you'll get it. <laughs> you'll get it. Um, when a person... But I, I still take it with a pinch of salt. What you are taking with a pinch of salt? Now, the mantra from the sea, the river from the, the river sea. to the sea. Mm -hmm. Where does that leave Israel? Remove them from the face of the earth. That's what it means. So how do you turn around then and say, let's live together in peace? It's a contradiction. So there is deception somewhere. And I think there needs to be honesty. I have said to the president of South Africa in parliament that South Africa and the international community can stop the war in Gaza in three weeks to a month's time. They can if they want to. There is no political will to do it. South Africa can stop the war. Oh, yeah. How can South Africa do that? South Africa, they must tell the international community, community there are three things, three basic things mm -hmm. that must be done. Mm -hmm. Number one, sorry. Number one, I'm sorry, I'm my hands no, no, fly when okay. I speak. It's okay. Yeah. N number one, let us revisit this issue of allowing other people to live, the right to live. In South Africa, every tribe has the right. If somebody can say, uh, maybe vendors or, or causers should not be allowed to live, there will be a war. And I will defend whoever is told they don't have the right to live. Okay? Let's have the people give everybody the right to live. Number two, the reason for the war was to stop or to, to get back the hostages. Pressure. I've heard South Africa, they've said it. Once or twice, I think there's been more from the river to the sea than release the hostages. Okay? If we are serious. 
saying this was the reason, remove the reason for fighting. Was that the only reason there is this war? Really? No, 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 no. I would not say the only, mm -hmm. but I'm saying it was the main reason that was spoken. We want the hostages to be returned. What stops the the international community of South Africa to say release those hostages? What was the reason the October seventh actually happened, in your view? <sighs> That's a difficult one because I don't know what was in the minds of those guys. Mm -hmm. I don't know what was in the minds of those guys. Okay? It happened. It was very unfortunate. It was very unfortunate. And the retaliation also was also very unfortunate. Okay? But the two things, release the hostages and also remove the tunnels. Okay? None of us here mm -hmm. can sleep peacefully knowing that there's somebody under your house who, is come, who wants to come in. But who built the tunnels, Reverend Mishra? Who built the tunnels? Who built the tunnels? You know who built the tunnels. Okay, who built who, the tunnels? Okay. You know Israel built the tunnels. It's a fact. No, not all of them. Not yes, all of them. Not, not all of them. Okay, not all of them. All right, not all of them. And the purpose for which they were built in the first place, mm -hmm. it was not for the purpose of attacking people, causing wars or causing fightings and kidnapping of innocent people. That was not the purpose. All right. No nation can do that. So, okay. And please what attend. Say, come. I, 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 I have not looked into that. I can look into that and come back, and then you get another sweetie for that one. <laughs> All right. Okay. So these are the two things. And but I think the third one, mm -hmm. the third one, I think that should happen is that um, people should be told that uh, everyone. Okay, that's the second one. Everyone has the right to exist. But uh, and then there the should be no charter mm -hmm. that says somebody must be removed um, from the face of the earth. And then, uh, what must Israel do? Israel must negotiate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Israel must negotiate. They must show a willingness to negotiate. And I think, okay, this is me thinking that if their right to live mm -hmm. is guaranteed, we'll see a different. Israel. I've never heard anybody say that. That's just my thinking. Because you are taking the right to fight to defend your border. Mm -hmm. to, to defend, you are taking it away. Okay. And do the Palestinians have a right to live? Obviously. I said everybody. Whether you with agree what with what we are seeing now? I mean, take away <sighs> everything you've said and look at the current state of what's happening now. That's heartbreaking. Uh, is, that, is, that a, is that a people who've been given the right to live? That, that's heartbreaking. But at the same time, the international community should say, remove women and children from the place where you want to fight. Do not use women and children as, as women and children. As simple as that. Okay? We so have seen why, doesn't they, why doesn't for instance, the U.S. do that? Why, why doesn't Israel do that and remove women and children? No, 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 no. Let, let, let's put it this way. When, when people are, are fighting and uh, you bring women and children to be human shields, you hide behind them. I mean, that's wrong. But it's that's easy. Israel can just simply give them the passage to remove the children and the women and then we can have half of that problem solved. I don't think it's that easy. I thought it's that easy. How will you? They, how, they're in charge of the borders, are mm, they not? No, no, no. How will you reach them to remove them? Because open the borders. Open the borders. Israel has every Israel. Open owes, the borders. Yes. And Israel, do, what's South Africa is doing? What's South Africa is doing? And allow everybody who wants to come in. You've just said they need to be saved, right? The women and children. And there's a war. They want you. No, no. I'm working with what you're saying. Okay, I hear you. If, if we work with what you're saying, mm. and you say let's allow them to fight, but remove women and children. Uh -huh. So why doesn't Israel do that? Open its borders, let the women and children to come in, and then let the war continue. And the, that's, the, how, it's, that's how you see okay, it. Okay, no, no. I, then you are saying then then the men are not going to follow them. Their children, they won't follow. But them. I'm working with your analogy. I hear. I agree with I, you. I, it's I not agree. my. It's, I it's not my analogy. It's yours. So, no, I, I agree. I agree. It's mine. Yes. But I am saying, and I'm asking you a question. Yeah. Do you think the fathers and the brothers of those women and children will remain behind? If if Israel I, can say allow the women to come in and the children to come in, that can be tried. We can suggest that. But Israel is is actually very much in control, and you know that. Without a war, they've been in control. They are in control of who moves in and who moves out. I tell you now, they are very capable of managing those borders, which is what they're doing now. Okay, 
about managing borders. I don't dispute that they are managing borders. But do you know that before the control that we are seeing today was there, mm -hmm. um, Intafada yes. was introduced. And when Intafada was introduced, people were bombed in pa ordinary passengers in buses. Were bombed. Okay? Restaurants. People were bombed in restaurants. Until they said, no, 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 we, now, we need to start controlling the movements because we have opened for everybody to go where they want to go. But look at what is happening because of our opening and allowing people to go where they want to go. So it is both sides. Both sides must take responsibility. If you are given the liberty, use your liberty profitably and don't abuse it or misuse it and start attacking people you don't like because you, have, you see an opening. You want to talk about managing crime and those who are in jail. You want to give them some sort of a, um, some activities to do. And you also want to manage uh, the parole system. Your, your suggestions on the parole system. When a judge sentences anybody, he bases that sentence on the facts in front of him or her. All right, you look at the facts because of one, two, three, this person deserves 30 years imprisonment. Then you have officials who say, Hey, we have been watching this guy, we have been watching this lady. This person has improved, he behaves so well. So let him go home, in spite of what the judge has said. And then that person, when they go out, they re offend. Why? Because when a person does not have the same environment when, where they committed the crime, they don't have the opportunity to recommit. That is why they can act like they've improved, that they've changed. Mm. You have in prison somebody who was uh, put there because they raped the child. They are in prison, there's no child to rape. Mm -hmm. How can you prove that that person has improved their behavior? Mm -hmm. Because the environment is different. So we are arguing that the environment cannot, the environment only should not be used as a basis to undermine what the judge has said mm -hmm. based on the facts. Because those officials, they don't see the facts that are that way before the judge who caused, who sentenced, who imposed the sentence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so what would you introduce that's different? No, no. Parole, we say what the judge has said must stay. Okay. If he says 30 years, must be 30 years. Uh, and deny all parole. Scrap parole altogether. So that, you know, yeah. you know, when people don't fear punishment, yes. when pe people don't fear punishment, they repeat it, okay? And they come to a stage where they don't mind going to jail. You hear some people, some people say, Why? Because they don't fear. It's nice and comfortable for some people so, in some places. So, so if you were to take um, that position as a president immediately, we would still have the problem of the jails being too full to, to keep all those prisoners in there without parole? That problem of overcrowding will be dealt with within a short space of time. Mm -hmm. And some of the innovative measures yes. will take, will include a person, nobody will be in prison for stealing something. Okay. Okay. Uh, so so your, your response to theft, or, or is it more petty, petty crime? Okay. Petty crime? Like? Let them clean buildings, let them work for what they've done, okay? Clean something, do something, mm -hmm. maybe with their hands, mm -hmm. as, as a form of punishment, all right? If a person steals a million rands, for example, yes. you put them in prison, how do you get that million back? We are thinking of the victim, mm -hmm. and we want to introduce a system that will allow the victim to get something out of what was stolen from them. Reverend Mesh, are you saying these blue... <laughs> Are you saying these white collar crime people who spill who steal millions would not have to account? I'm saying, listen, I'm saying ACDP says restitution, you pay back fourfold. Mm -hmm. Okay? You are not going to sit in there, you're going to work and pay back four times what you have stolen. And with that fourfold that is going to come back from what we have stolen. Maybe a quarter, 25% will go to the whistleblower. 25% will go to the man who worked hard to arrest the, the, that person. The money is used, 25%, for ensuring that that department is skilled so that they will be able to do what they are doing. But lastly, 
double the amount of the one who, the victim. The victim must get something back that, from what they lost. That means corporate corporate South Africa would get away with a lot. No. Because they would just pay. No. They no, would just no, pay no, no, no. and <clears throat> no, no one will have to do any jail time. If you've got the money and you know that you're just going to be asked to pay back that money, that's what you'll just do. No. 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 If we realize that the people are doing this continually, deliberately because they have money, then the sentence is going to be doubled. I mean, I, I, it's I'll give going an example. Yeah. Steinhoff, what, what would you do there? Because, I mean, just to pay back that money it would when, not be good enough. Well, yeah. When people know that there is going to be punishment, crime in South Africa is increasing. Yes. Whether blue collar, white collar, brown collar, whatever collar. When people know I'm going to get away with it, mm. It becomes a culture. Mm. There is no fear of punishment. Mm. But when people know that I'm going to be punished mm. severely if I'm fine with this, then they are going to shy away from doing that. We want to bring back the fear of punishment. Thanks for staying with us. I said I'll take your calls 86 959 I'll also listen to those voice notes. Let's take one, Reverend Mishwe. Hello, uh, Miss Motene. I think Umfundi is just uh, saying isn't on a young as a mosque. And then, which means you know, he supports the genocide lanes in the Gaza. But okay, I don't want to dwell in that. Just ask him, and then from there, what is their position as the party on BRICS? What are they, what is their take, what is their take on BRICS? Reverend Mishra, your take on BRICS? No problem with BRICS, it's a partnership. Um, that benefits countries that are within that partnership and uh, we don't have a problem with it. All right. Uh, here's another one. Muso is asking, kindly ask Reverend Mishra, that will be, um, will be open, will he be open to drastically limiting international brands like Nike, etc. in favor of local brands since he advocates for entrepreneurship? Um, if it's um, limiting people's rights, that's something that will shy away from okay people have the right to choose if people say we want that brand yes on what basis can you say you can't have it when they want it Mm -hmm. no we'll not do that while we are asking people to promote local businesses local styles local brands at the same time we cannot say to those who want to import something you can import you can't do that Tabelo here on X is asking, please ask him what his party has contributed since being in parliament or are they just there in jail? Opposition parties obviously uh, don't have opportunities to contribute, to be compared to a government because they don't have the resources that government had. People should see when a party has grown or when a party has uh, is in government and be given the responsibility and the privilege to rule what the party can do. But the fact is, um, we can talk about the in contributions that we've made, we are making in parliaments, in debates. I mean, there are many, many things. Let me mention one maybe yes. that has benefited mo- many South Africans who are still saying thank you today. The president of South Africa once said everybody in South Africa, he started by saying nobody's going to be forced to take the vaccine. Okay. Then he saw assaulted and he said, no, we want mandatory vaccinations. And I challenge him in parliament. As I admit the president, you can't do that. Why? Because even though we know that God wants everybody to be saved, but God does not force everybody to be saved. So government has no right to force people to take a vaccine if they don't want it. Give people a choice. So we believe in choice. And that's what I said. So it is one of the things that I'm, I don't know. I don't, don't want to talk about your status. But many people <laughs> who did not want to be vaccinated are saying thank you for the step you have taken to ensure that we are not forced and our children are not forced to take the vaccine. All right. Land with or without compensation? Definitely with compensation because when if somebody has improved the value by working with their hands, that value has to be recognized, it has to be acknowledged, and people have to pay for that value that I contributed. If I increase, uh, I build, I want something for what I've built. Reverend Meshe, my last question, why would anybody want to vote for you? Tell us in maybe one minute why we should vote for you. Our slogan, as you know, is SOS. There is an an emergency cry, help, okay? S, people want service and delivery 
is very, very short in getting to people. We want people to get proper service delivery. We want people who have been promised uh, water to get clean water. It is inexcusable that after 30 years, we still have people who share water with animals. That is definitely not on. So ACDP is saying service, we want to give people good service. Then order, oh, order. There must be law and order in the country. You cannot have the mafia live and the Chinese gangs and other gangs leave their countries to come here because anything goes here, all right? Borders are open. You can come in any time, day or night. We want order. Everything must be done orderly. On the roads, obviously, when we say keep left, people say, have said, but if you say we must have rights, if I want to drive on the right, I must be allowed to drive on the right. I said, no, 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 that would be disorderly. If we say left, left is left. You are not from America. If you come from America, you drive on the right. Here is left, okay? We want order in society. And then the last is safety, security. We want to be safe. Human beings must be safe if they have a responsible government. The number one priority and responsibility of any government is to secure the lives of its citizens. If government fails to secure the lives of the people, women are raped all the time, children are raped, they are abducted, they are kidnapped, and they are never found. Something is wrong. People are not secure. ACDP says bring security back to the country, and that's what we want to do. ACDP leader, Reverend Mwishwa, thank you so much for coming through. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me tonight.